it's Ricardo with the Nav Fam, and I'm back with another video. Today's video is a little bit different in comparison to all of the other videos on our channel. Um, for those who are currently subscribed, I decided that today I'm going to make a video for my adult military friends, um, for those who are active duty, um, military spouses, you name it. Um, that are either currently stationed at Shaw Air Force Base, for example, or anywhere else over the world, trying to decide whether you're going to live off base or on base. And um, I've been married for 14 years, and my husband has been in the military for about 18 and a half years. He was going to retire at 20 years, but he did get picked up for promotion recently, and um, a little bit extra time of service was added on to his uh, time of service and um, we are currently stationed at Shaw Air Force Base and we purchased a home about a year and a half ago that's how long we've been here at Shaw Air Force Base in Sumter South Carolina um, because we thought that we were going to retire here so for those who watched my previous video for the on-base housing tour um, you kind of already know my story but for those who are just now tuning in um, I'm doing a little introduction so you know exactly what I'm talking about and why my opinion is um, what it is and um, understand my experience. Um, we have, out of the, the whole time that we've been married, about half of the time uh, we've been living on base all the way from Germany, from Europe overseas to stateside, from Georgia, North Carolina and South Carolina. So I do know a lot about both, whether it's living on base or off base. And um, today I just wanted to share my experience with you guys based on what I noticed and what I learned. So this video was not created for judgmental reasons or purposes. Um, this is all based on my own opinion and my experience. And of course, obviously you guys are going to have your own opinion, which is probably why you're watching the video to decide or learn um, about what you wanna do moving forward or whatever your current situation is. So um, I work full time. I'm an agency development manager at a life insurance company and um, my husband is currently deployed. Uh, we recently moved on base to Shaw Air Force Base from off base um, away from the home that we purchased. It's a beautiful home, four bedroom in the Pocala Springs area and we really did enjoy it. However, um, now that my husband got promoted or is getting picked up for promotion and extra time was added on, we're not retiring here in Sumter anymore. So, which is why we also put the home on the market for sale. Um, you can check it out on Zillow.com or Realtor.com. Um, our Realtor Sandra Ford or Susan Hall can help you with that if you are interested in purchasing a home and retiring here in South Carolina or if you're looking at purchasing a home to make it an income property, whatever you want to do just to kind of get that uh, word out there. Um, However, I, uh, like I mentioned, I wanted to share my experience with you and uh, we are now living on base at Shaw. We moved in here roughly two or three weeks ago and I really like it. So if you haven't watched my previous video for the on base housing tour, go to our channel, The Nav Fam, and check it out just in case you are interested in, in looking at it. Obviously, um, every house may be different or you know, depending on rank, depending on what duty station you are but at least you kind of get a clue of what it's like here or maybe anywhere else. All right, so let's get started with showing you guys our previous home, the one that we still own right now that's out on the market. This is our four bedroom, two and a half bath home in the Pocala Springs community. And right off of the entrance where we have a hallway which leads into the formal dining room but I turn it into my office and right across from that we have a half bath and because it's an open floor plan you can get to the kitchen which has granite countertops and dark wood cabinets that lead into the living room through the dining room obviously it's half pictures because the rooms are pretty big upstairs we have the master bedroom with a big master bathroom as well, granite countertops, and the bathtub is right next to the shower. The beautiful backyard with green grass, nice for entertaining, and privacy fence, and the pond is right behind it. So it's a beautiful home. 
um, built by Great Southern Homes last year in 2018. It was done anywhere between March and June. There were a few touch-ups they needed to make at the time that we purchased it in June, um, but obviously they didn't show all of the pictures because I don't want to make this video too long and I just want to get down to the basics to the topic that um, I'm talking about today. So now we're going to get to the on-base home. This is the home that we currently live in on Shaw Air Force Base. It's also a four bedroom, two and a half bath, single family home right on a cul-de-sac. It also has a privacy fence that leads directly to a big open field. There's a lot of privacy with this home. The neighbors are not directly right next to you. And it's also a lot bigger. It's 2,700 square feet versus 2,100 square feet. So now that you guys seen the home that we own off base and the current home that we are in on Shaw Air Force Base, let's get down to the numbers as far as the difference from owning, renting versus to living on base. I'm going to base my example off of $1,300 of BAH. This is just a random number that I'm throwing out there because I didn't want to lowball it, but I also didn't want to go too high. Of course, this number is going to be different for everyone, depending on your rank, your location, and the numbers of um, dependents. So we're just going to use this number as an example for electric, gas, and internet, and so on. Those are true numbers based on the average of the bills that we received at the home that we own off base. But uh, let's just say that your monthly mortgage or rent is $1,200 and your electric bill is $200, which is really just the average number because it depends on the season of the year. If you're located somewhere where you have long, hot summers and if you are a stay-at-home spouse, um, that bill is going to be a lot higher, maybe anywhere between $250 to $400, especially if you have some children in school that may be staying at home with you during summer break. For one, because the electronics will be used a lot more, whether it's TV, phones, laptops, tablets, playstations, you name it. Um, and two, you're going to have the AC running a little bit longer um, because you want to keep your house cool. So... Just be prepared for higher electric bills depending on the season and usage. Um, for gas, we had an electric, sto electric stove off base, but we only needed gas for hot water, for example. So our bill was anywhere between $20 to $30, which isn't bad at all. Um, we transferred the internet from off base to on base, so our bill still remains at $70. And uh, here in Sumter, the water, sewer, and trash is all included in one. Our average was $70. However, during the summer months, um, we used our sprinklers. We had them on three times per week for about 10 minutes. We also had inflatable pools that we um, took down and then refilled them with water when it was really hot. And at some point, we also purchased our above ground pool that took 11,000 gallons of water. So during that time, our bill was anywhere between 90 to $130. So just be prepared for those seasons and you can't really base it off of average number because they can jump up um, pretty quickly. So just with those average numbers that I threw out there and I didn't low about them at all really, um, we're already at $1,570. So we are already way above and beyond our BAH of $1,300 that I used for this example. This is not counting extra water being used for any pools or sprinklers. This is also not counting um, gas for your car for the commute to work and back. And this is also not counting um, groceries that you buy or anything like that. So you also have to keep that in mind. So if you include all of the things that you really want, for example, even cable, um, you, you're probably going to be right under 2000 or maybe even over $2,000 a month for living off base. And then again, those are just average numbers. So there's times where it's even higher than that. Okay, so now let's take a look at living on base and see what the difference is here. Obviously, the BAH amount is not going to change if we're going to continue with the same example previously of $1,300. Um, I did want to say that I'm part of a lot of groups where I've seen or heard people say, oh my gosh, if we live on base, they're going to take all of our BAH. 
Well, you're not going to have it one way or the other because if you live off base, the difference is that you're getting the BH paid out in your bank account um, with your first month's pay, for example. Um, it looks great because it looks like you got paid so much, but just as fast as you're getting it, just as fast as it's going to because you have to use it to pay your rent or your mortgage. So um, the only way to make profit off of BH is if you are way below your BAH amount, for example, anywhere between $500 to $800 of rent or mortgage um, to a point to where your BAH is also going to cover the utilities. But if you're a family of four, five or six and up, it's hard to find um, a place like that, especially if you are um, looking at being in a good school district. And of course, it also depends on your location. So just wanted to put that out there. Now with living on base, you are getting BAH, but at the same time, you're not because it is being deducted from your LES. And I threw an internet bill out there for $70. Um, that's really the only house bill we have right now um, because the water, electricity, gas is also included in your BAH, which means that at some point we really have zero expenses. Of course, this looks a little bit different for different people. If you have a cable bill, you throw it on there. And of course, you got your groceries that we all need. When living off base, you are responsible for cutting your own grass in the front and backyard, as well as your gardening tools and supplies. Versus to living on base, they will come out and cut your front yard. And if your spouse is deployed, they will also cut your backyard. If you are a homeowner and anything breaks in a home, you are responsible for getting it fixed and paid for. And if you are a renter, you will have a property manager who you can contact to put in a maintenance request and, like and someone will come out and fix it. But if something breaks and it is your fault for breaking it, then you may have a partial payment that you have to pay um, versus to living on base. If anything breaks, you'll put in a maintenance request with the housing office and someone will come out and get it corrected. And of course, let's not forget about the commute for living off base. You may have a commute from anywhere between 20 to 60 minutes, depending on how far you are away from base, not to mention traffic. And if you live on base, you may have a commute from anywhere between 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how big the base is. All right, guys, so that was my video for today. I hope it wasn't too long. I try to squeeze a whole lot of content into one video. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a few things that I forgot or didn't touch base on. However, I think um, the topic came across pretty well. Um, however, I hope that this really helps somebody make their own decision, build their own opinion about whether live on base or off base. Um, I personally don't really have a preference. I did enjoy living off base but there's always pros and cons. So I did highlight some of them in the video and um, some are missing, of course, didn't wanna make it too long. But for me personally, I enjoy living on base, um, at least temporarily for a while, maybe until my husband is getting ready to retire, um, simply because we are going through um, selling our home right now, which also isn't easy. Um, Two, we're not ready to be renters, so which is why we are not really 100% um, considering renting the home out. And three, there's a big convenience living on base. It's safer for me, especially while my husband is deployed. It's closer to my own job. Um, and then I have the convenience or, you know, just the, the small commute to the commissary, to the PX, to uh, the shop at, and a lot of the local stores. So... I really enjoy that more, especially if you're looking for financial freedom, if you want to save money, um, then that's definitely the way to go because you do have everything you need on base, um, all the way from the community events um, on base, from getting light bulbs from the maintenance shop or having a, you know, a dump for, you know, tossing some of your bulk items or getting rid of boxes is really convenient. Um, versus to living off base. Now, if you are really hating it on base, then get off base. If you are looking to purchase a home to have an income property, or if you want to retire somewhere and you love it, then go for buying a home. But if you still have so and so many years left in the military, then I would think two or three times before purchasing a home, simply for the fact because you don't want to go through a headache of having to sell it because it can be a tough time. Um, and simply enjoy the benefits that come with 
being in the military and having the opportunity to live on base. And my kids are back from outside. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video right here. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. I do have a few more videos coming and um, I appreciate you guys taking your time to check it out. Thank you.